What's up guys, welcome to Time for Tennis. Um, I'm just gonna go over some details on this 10X racket that I got. So this is a 10X Excalibur. And I'll just tell you right now, my overall experience with 10X so far has been pretty lame. And I wanna start just doing like really unbiased uh, racket reviews and really just a review of whatever you know I'm doing. I'll try to just be as honest and transparent as possible. And if I do have a bias, then I'll try to be pretty clear about that. So my bias, I guess, is that my experience has been pretty negative. But on top of that, I mean, I have no affiliation with anyone that I'm really working with, um, at least at this point. And if I do, then I'd be transparent about that probably. But I uh, didn't have a great experience with this racket company. So, I mean, I'm not going to hold back on how I feel about certain things and how they went. But let's just talk about the racket quality here real quick, right? So this is a quick little video where I just sort of gloss over the racket as a whole as a first impression. This is kind of like an unboxing thing, um, although it's already unboxed at this point. But look at this 10X text and logo. You can already tell that it's sort of crooked compared to the uh, horizontal lines on the racket, right? Like this is clearly off center a little bit. So whoever put this down and painted it or whatever didn't align it so well. I mean, it's so clear with my eyes that it's not on center that I feel like this should just have been done better. I mean, what could the reason possibly be that it's this crooked, right? And it's fine. It's like a superficial detail. Not everyone would notice or necessarily care, but it's just one thing on top of many things. Also, you see this little bump right here? Um, I'll bring that up later, but that is kind of like another quality control issue. So I'll just play this real quick and I'll pause where I feel like there's something to say. I also have some pictures that I'll go over later that highlight some other details. So this is the throat logo. I'm going to flip back and forth a little bit on that. I like that gloss text for Excalibur on the side there. You saw it real quick. And that's the other throat logo. So right there you can actually see, I'm going to pause, it's uh, pretty straight. I don't really have any complaints about how that's on there. But on the other side, it's kind of crooked, right? Again, a, not a big deal. It's kind of a superficial detail, but I feel like the superficial details should be the easy ones. Especially when the racket's this basic. I mean, it's just like a matte black racket with a bit of text on it. It's not like some crazy paint job. You know, there's a lot of rackets out there that have so much detail on it, like some of the Yonex E-Zones or the V-Cores, I mean, you have like splatter effects and then like dark blues on top of light blues and all these digital line patterns and a bunch of different texts and then like metallic parts of the text with, it's just, there's so much more going on and all that detail is perfectly installed, whereas a racket like this has much more basic detail and almost every detail has some kind of visibly obvious imperfection, so... To me, that just says something already about the quality control of the racket. And that's just the paint job. So I'm going to keep playing this. Um, Right there, you can see the racket specs. I'll pause when it's more clear. There we go. All right. So one thing, this is like a customer service complaint that I have. I tried asking multiple times, what is your guys' quality control discrepancy, right? Because every racket company has like a plus or minus um, however many grams that the racket is allowed to be from what they spec that it's going to be. And I think Wilson was plus or minus seven for a while. And I think Prince was as well. A lot of racket companies are plus or minus set seven or six. Um, maybe some are five now because like, people are becoming more aware of like racket discrepancies, right? So if you have plus or minus five, that means you can get one racket that's minus five and then another one that's plus five. So you could technically have two rackets that are supposedly identical and they're 10 grams apart. And then on top of that, they have another discrepancy that allows their rackets to be plus or minus however many points away from balance. So when you combine those two things, like your racket is allowed to be up to 10 grams apart from your other one, and then however many points off the balance, like that 10 grams could make the racket like weirdly more handle heavy or head heavy, or maybe it's somewhere on the sides of the head, like the three and nine and mess with the twist way. I mean, you could get a pretty different feeling racket when it should be an identical racket. So that's why I asked. I wanted to see how far they pushed that threshold and I could never get a straight answer. It was always the best I got to a straight answer. Most of the time they just glossed over it completely and talked about something else. Or um, the best one I got was uh, that our quality control is pretty good or, or pretty decent or decent. I forget what it was said exactly. But it was something along those lines. I have it somewhere in some WhatsApp thread with the owner, of all people, um, 
who only told me that much. And, and so when it says plus or minus five grams on the racket, why can't you just tell me it's plus or minus five grams? That's what I was asking for. I was asking a really direct, simple question, and the answer is right there on your racket. So why couldn't I get a straight answer, you know? Anyway, I'm going to keep watching this. Uh, that's just the text on the side of the racket. It's a nice, cool, like, glossy text on top of the matte finish. I like that. It's kind of like pro staff-esque. Um, so that X on the grommet there, right on the side of the bumpers. Um, I'm going to talk about that later. I just want to point it out real quick. Because one side has it pretty dead center, and then the other side it's pretty off-center. And I have some pictures later you'll see that I uh, make that more obvious. Just looking at the grommets and the bumpers real quick. So I'll tell you guys something, actually. So one reason I'm, I'm critical is just because I'm somewhat of an obsessive person in general. But uh, I do make a lot of stuff, so I think my attention to detail is pretty high. And on top of that, I've actually gone through the trouble of uh, finding racket manufacturers and manufacturing my own rackets just to see what it's like. Because it turns out that it was relatively affordable for what it is. And one thing that I learned is that a lot of these racket manufacturers have a very generic... Uh, pattern to how they make their bumpers and this bumper grommet combination is almost identical to the kinds that were made by these uh cheap racket manufacturers that a lot of people can have access to like these aren't these aren't exclusive racket manufacturers like pretty much anyone that has the contact info can just call them up and then you know score up some kind of deal to manufacture some rackets you can do samples and then you can run a production line and hopefully somebody there is pretty decent at English so that you can actually communicate decently enough some of the technical details or whatever. So I've done that a few times and, um, you know, if I pointed it out, you might be able to tell that this, this bumper is just like such a generic looking bumper and the way that it interlaces here, like, look at this, it's the most basic square shape right here and just the most basic grommet head bumper shape. And so most people might be, you know, thinking like, really, like, what do you mean? Um, but if you look at your racket, more than likely, there's just something a little more unique looking about your bumper and grommet. Um, and the only th detail here is just this little 10x thing. That's it. There's no texture. There's no pattern. There's no, you know, unique way in which this part interlaces with this part. It's just the most, like, basic look possible, but it has their name on it. And that that is like a service that they'll offer. It's like, okay, here, we put we, we can put a bumper on your grommet or a grommet on your uh, racket and you can put your logo on it, you know, and that's it. That's all you can do. So there's that. And that was just like one thing on top of other things that kind of signaled to me like, well, maybe the racket quality isn't going to be the best. So on top of all those imperfections with the logo placement and whatnot, um, that was just another detail, even the way that the plastic feels. Um, and then the drill pattern, which I'll get into later. All right, so here are some more close-ups. That is the X right below the grommet. You can see clearly that it's a little bit off-center. Again, kind of a superficial detail, whatever. But on the other side, they got it close, right? It's a little bit closer here, but it's center. And then on this one, on the other side, it's definitely a little far off to the left and then further away. It's just like, I don't know. I feel like these things should be more centered, just overall. And then here's the center, uh, or the 10X logo, um, just not centered very well. Um, and then the throat logo not centered very well on one side, and then it's centered pretty decently on the other side. I mean, I feel like all these details should be easy enough to get right the first time. This little bump here that you see under the finishing tape for the base grip, I lift that off because I feel it under my fingers. It's like this sharp pricking thing. This is the polyurethane mold that makes the handle shape and the grip size, actually. So they must have just peeled this off in such a way that left like a really sharp edge, which kind of starts here, and then it sticks up here like ridiculously. And it looks terrible if you take the grip off. Look at that. That's some really sloppy work, honestly. Um, so what I did was actually file that down. So I was able to correct that. But I mean, that's that's a job that could have taken like a minute or two in the factory. I mean, they should have done something about that. Somebody in quality control should have caught that and they didn't. And if they did, I guess they were just too lazy or maybe they didn't think the customer would care. I'm not I'm not really sure how that made it to the final product that ended up getting sold to me 
shipped all the way from Australia to California for like $35 shipping, you know, they should have caught that. Anyway, that's uh, the rest of the polyurethane mold around the top. And you can just tell like the edging on this isn't so good. It's just not such a clean job. And that's the bumper, sorry, the uh, butt cap. Um, and it's just a really generic butt cap. It has their logo on it, but there's no trap door. I feel like the higher end rackets generally have a trap door so that you can actually access the handle or see what's in there or maybe do some customization in the handle without having to rip the butt cap off. But um, I take the butt cap off of all my rackets and I put the Wilson non-pro staff style on there. So that's like on the blade. It's a very rounded uh, butt cap. I like it. Um, this is interesting, the handle mold. So this is like the handle with the grip taken off. It, they have their logo or their text like embossed or raised into the mold of the handle, which to me is kind of interesting, but also probably not a great idea and uh, unnecessary, right? Because it's under the base grip. And so if you wanted to, you could actually feel this with your fingers after wrapping the racket. Um, but why do this, you know? I don't know. It just seems like a silly, unnecessary detail that actually messes with the shape a little bit. So I don't think that's a good idea. I mean, it's kind of cool, but I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, here's a quick clip just showing how the butt cap is stapled in. So typically the butt cap is stapled, but these staples went so deep. They basically like penetrated all the way through the plastic of the butt cap. That's weird. I've never seen that before. Here's another picture, another one. Look at that. The staple went so far through the butt cap, it basically went all the way through the butt cap. So you gotta wonder how secure it is. Now, hey, look at this. I have another picture later that I ended up sending to customer service um, about this, but look at the line here. If you look at this line, this is the handle of the racket. This is called the hairpin. So every racket when it's done being manufactured uh, generally is in this form where it just has this sort of uh, grip shape right here. And then they put the polyurethane mold on top of that. So if you look at this, this is the actual racket right here, this gray area. These two areas here are the tubes. The racket is actually essentially like one long tube that's shaped into a racket like this. Like if you follow my, my terrible mouse drawing here, it kind of gets traced out to the shape of a light bulb and then comes back down to meet itself. So that's why there's two tubes here. Um, and then look at the alignment on this grip, right? Look at that line up here where the grip mold is. And then look at this line. It's pretty far off. So like, I mean, this is so far off that it almost changes the orientation of your racket face from like that of a semi-Western to an Eastern grip, you know? I mean, that is really off center here. And also this is silicon or silicone, sorry, silicone in the handles. Like what else could this possibly be in the handle? And I, and I talked to customer service about this. I'll just pull up the picture right now, I guess, um, since it's relevant now, I asked if they put silicone in their handles and they say, we don't put silicone in the handles, maybe slightly off as manufacturing is this way. So they basically just tell me that the manufacturing is this way. So I sent another picture, um, but they say no way around that. The best thing you can do is send pictures or photos of the issues you see from there. We can help you further. So remember they said from here, we can help you further. So I send the picture and then I send another picture right after that picture, right? So this is immediately in response to them saying, send pictures and we'll help you further. I say that's a pretty steep misalignment of handle to racket IMO in my opinion. And so I trace out these lines to show them just how crooked it is. Do you see the pictures? And then this guy says, I'm sorry, we cannot help you any further. Enjoy the racket. Thank you for the feedback. However, we do not replace rackets with this situation. So what kind of service is that? You know, they say right here, from here, we can help you further. And then I send the picture. I'm sorry, we cannot help you any further. Enjoy the racket, you know? So not only going completely back on their word, but then telling me to enjoy the racket. Okay, enough of that. All right, back to the handle. Now I'm gonna to go to the next picture. 
Oh yeah, I noticed how soft this material is. You see that? I kind of just rubbed my nail over it and pressed a little bit and it was just so effortlessly dented in the corner. Whatever this polyurethane mold is, is so porous and light. It's kind of like a hard styrofoam. Um, this is a picture of me taking the butt cap off and putting the Wilson one on. I use extended length rackets. Um, this is a Yonex extended length with the white grip. Since that was a flush butt cap on the 10X, I put the Wilson with a trap door on it and it made it like an eighth of an inch longer. So that's why I wanted to show that. And later I removed that eighth inch and then get the length down to be perfect 27.5. But in this picture, I just wanted to show that. That's not an issue. It's just like a picture that I wanted to take. Um... Some diadem rackets. None of these are really relevant for the video except this one. Oh. Wait a second. Yeah, this video. So I took this video mostly to just show you guys how smooth. Look at how smooth the uh, polyurethane material is for the butt cap on the diadem. And also, like, look at this stable. It's not completely recessed into the butt cap. So just the general install quality and the material quality of this uh, racket, you know, and Diadem isn't even a big brand name. I'm just comparing them to 10X to show you the difference in quality. Um, I think I have some more close-ups here. Yeah, you can see this is the 10X handle. This little line here is uh, pretty clearly defined. And then you can see here there's just so many little pores and air bubbles, right? Look at how porous this handle is. Um, another shot of that. And then look at how smooth it is. It looks like a freaking stick of butter in comparison. Look at this and look at that. Night and day. Look at this. Huge difference. Uh, this is a quick video of me having removed the butt cap. And look at the damage that the handle actually went through. Just because the staples were so recessed into the handle and the butt cap, but also because this uh, mold that they use is so soft, so delicate. Look at this. I mean, I did a pretty careful job and uh, it was just like, there's no chance I wouldn't damage the handle. But look at some of the damage that was already caused just from them stapling it because the handle mold is so soft. You can tell like there's a dent here past where the staple holes are. That shouldn't be the case. And that's the diadem one, because I removed the butt cap on the diadem as well. Look at that. These clean holes, no dent really. And then there's very little to no damage from having removed that. Look at that. It's a huge difference. It's obviously not perfect, but it's a huge difference. Oh yeah, you know, I have this shot here too to kind of show you that the... Uh, that the alignment on the handle is a lot better, right? So if you look at the hairpin here on this diadem racket, the diadem rackets are interesting. You might be wondering what this is. It's like a combination of foams and whatnot that have an interesting like dampening and feel effect. Uh, di diadem does stuff differently and I really commend them for that, but that you can see their technology in the handle. But that's the, besides the point here. Um, look at these lines right here and then look at the line here it's very straight it's like almost dead on which is how it should be so a little comparison again of the two handles like you can just look at the quality of the handle mold i mean geez the 10x racket one looks so old and aged it really does and this is the diadem one like you can just tell which one is what racket based on the quality of the handle mold and yeah, that's pretty much my pictures there. My last two were just uh, to show you the customer service a little bit. And then here's one um, of me talking with Paul. He's one of the owners. Um, and so I, I asked him, what did you guys put in the handle? He never replied. A few days later, I asked him and I tell him, someone on Messenger said you guys don't put silicone in the handles, but it looks and feels like silicone. Doesn't reply. Um, and then I send and he sees the message. And I sent another message. Do you know I'm just getting really mixed signals? Thank you. Still no reply. So that's the kind of customer service um, that I think you can come to expect from 10X, especially if you run into any problems. So I'm just kind of giving this out to warn you guys maybe to not get this racket because I think your money is better spent elsewhere. And the other thing is that this racket company really uh, markets selling pro stock rackets. 
Oh, and I don't want to get into the pro stock discussion too much, but um, pro stock rackets essentially are made with zero discrepancy. So that whole plus or minus five grams thing that doesn't exist in the pro stock world. Their their tolerance is plus or minus zero, you know, and that's why you pay such good money for pro stock rackets is because you can buy two models of the same pro stock racket at any time, and they should be virtually completely identical in every single way their balance, their flex, their overall weight, their swing weight. I mean, they're basically manufactured to perfection. And for 10X to um, market selling pro stock rackets at an affordable price is completely, completely inaccurate. I think the best case for their, you know, marketing a pro stock racket is maybe their Uniflex technology or whatever has some characteristics of a pro stock racket, but that's also kind of just BS because it's not like all pro stock rackets flex in the same way. Um, pro stock rackets are essentially, essentially they could just be a racket of an older mold that one of their pros is using that they continue to make. Um, you guys should look into what a pro stock racket is on your own, or maybe I can talk about that in a future video, but there's no way in heck the 10 X rackets can call themselves a pro stock racket when there's as much discrepancy as I've shown you in just a few pictures in a quick video. Um, there's just no way. So that's my first impression on the pro, uh, on the 10 X racket. I, I keep wanting to say pro Ken X because 10 X makes me think pro Ken X. So that's kind of triggering me to say that. So sorry, I'm not trying to insult pro Ken X by comparing them to 10 X. Yeah, that's my two cents for now. I w have strung up the racket since so I'll do another video review. And yeah, I'll let you guys know what I think about the racket and how it actually plays. But uh, yeah, first impressions are not so good. So anyway, stay tuned if you want to see another video of me probably roasting 10x. But maybe I'll have some okay things to say about the racket. But I can't really look past some of these flaws. Um, and we'll see how customer service ends up revealing or resolving this uh, all together. So stay tuned. Um, please subscribe to my channel and uh, stay tuned for future videos. I do reviews of whatever, you know, shoes and strings and rackets. And I'm kind of just getting started, but... uh. I got a lot of things to say. Usually my videos will not be anywhere close to this long, but I just really wanted to get into this one um, for you guys. So don't expect videos to be this long usually, but I hope you enjoyed this. And yeah, let me know what you think of 10X or how you became aware of them. If you own a 10X, I'm curious about what your experience is. I started a couple forums talking about this racket too. So, um, and I said what I said there. So I'll leave a link to those two forums that I started on Talk Tennis, which is a tennis warehouse forum. Um, you can see what people had to say and what I had to say. And yeah, for now, I'll just leave it at that. Watch my other videos, um, leave comments. I will definitely respond to you. And yeah, see you there. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.